Uh, We're as, good readers. So. <laughs> as we spoke earlier, Senator, uh, I'm represent. Uh, excuse me, Senator Troy Jackson, uh, <laughs> represent District, that, <laughs> District 35 in Rusty County, uh, and I'm also uh, Senate Chair of uh, Citizens Trade Policy Commission, uh, which uh, my good friend and uh, senior member of Rusty County, uh, <laughs> Senator Sherman, is also a member, and uh, as the letter explains. Uh, there's a lot of issues with international trade. Uh, the, the policy committee uh, is interested in these extraction bills. Uh, we certainly don't want to step in your purview. I'm telling you, standing here the last two hours, I understand that this committee is far, far uh, experienced and educated on these issues. But uh, in regards to any trade agreements that uh, might be affected by any legislation that you might actually pass, uh, Citizens Trade Policy Commission would like to have an opportunity just to weigh in on. And with that, I will let you close the hearing. <laughs> awesome, but you haven't heard from industry here today yet. Senator Hobbins, Representative Hink, is out of the room right now and other members of the Joint Committee. Uh, my name is Mark Dubois. I work as Natural Resource Manager for Poland Spring. Uh, I grew up in Cumberland and attended college at the University of Maine uh, where I got a degree in geology. I'm a certified geologist in the state of Maine. Attending university in Maine, I really didn't think I'd be able to manage to work in Maine, and I'm really happy to be working here in industry, and uh, hopefully it can continue to be a growing industry in Maine. Uh, there's not many natural resource jobs here in the state, so uh, it's, a, it's a good job for me to have with Poland Spring. I'm either for nor against uh, LD 238. Our company will follow the processes that are set up by the utilities. Uh, you've heard a lot about the costs and other implications of this bill from the water utilities folks today. I wanted to give you a little information about Poland Spring and a little bit about industry that uses water. Um, I feel that some of this bill rev revolves around us. Uh, I don't think that's because rhetoric... <laughs> I do not think that's because... Uh, I, th I think that's because rhetoric has really ruled the day in this discussion uh, in southern Maine. Um, I think the normal processes are being hijacked before you can have a legitimate discussion about facts and issues uh, regarding water. You've heard some of this rhetoric today. Um, I think lately, uh, and even started thinking about this last night, this uh, rhetoric is almost like traffic on the highway. It's speeding by our company um, as we're trying to do business in the, Maine, in the state of Maine. I heard um, from one of our speakers today about public trust. Um, public trust, uh, I think, is quite clearly a, a property rights issue. Um, these are all, again, quotes from today regarding uh, this bill, uh, LD-238. I also heard the quote, uh, shifting a water resource to a public entity, I believe, you know, presumably Poland Spring. Uh, our intent was never to shift that resource, its ownership of that resource. We wanted to be a customer of a water district. They were going to open a store whereby we could purchase water from that store under certain conditions. If they didn't have water, if there was problems with habitat, stream flow, and many other conditions that the DEP would evaluate, that store would be closed. Um, we're not talking about shifting the ownership of a resource. Um, I heard um, a representative leg actually mentioned, and I'm not sure if I heard this correctly, but you mentioned that we ship most of our water outside of the U.S. And uh, that's not the case at all. We ship a small amount of water to Canada uh, to support a plant up there because we do flavored water out of our Poland site. But we have a hard time shipping water past New Jersey to make a profit. We ship water to places like Louisiana to, to help out on Hurricane Katrina, but those things are not profitable situations to ship water long distances. So I want you to keep that in mind as you're thinking about water resources and a lot of the issues that are coming up uh, this year with you. Um, I also heard the words, again, that make me cringe, company from outside. I grew up here in Maine. I represent you know 800 other employees at our company. Uh, this is our home too. And uh, we'd like to grow here and grow with the state of Maine. So I think the company from outside stuff, uh, I don't think it really helps. Um, we also heard some quotes about paying a fair price for water. The PUC sets uh, water rates for utilities. It's quite clear. Um, and that's what uh, we were basing uh, water rates for, whether we're in Freiburg or Kennebunk or another town, maybe Alfred or some other town. Um, we also heard about the decision, and I quote, decision solely in the hands of a few trustees. Um, I don't think that's really the case here. As you, we heard about Chapter 691 or other conditions, um, it, as 
relegated to PUC regulated industries, uh, there are courses of action to follow if folks have complaints about issues uh, that a water t utility undertakes. We also heard about truck traffic. I'm not sure about this referendum process and deciding on truck traffic issues uh, dealing with water district trustees in a referendum process. I don't see where all those issues are going to be resolved in a referendum process. Um, it's important, I think, to listen to this rhetoric um, because I hear it and it's, and it's driving the direction of our company in different locations in the U.S. <coughs> it's important because it's not only going to be Poll and Spring the next time uh, the rhetoric and the discussion starts up. This bill could change how corporations view doing business in Maine. Uh, the first thing that a company looks at is power and water, as you guys know. And to have a business grow in the state, um, as Mr. Parent said, those companies look at those two issues right off the bat. If you have a flow chart of issues, power, water, and now in the state of Maine compared to another state, you have another you know, public referendum process to try to tick off, I'm afraid that that is, uh, is, is going to be a little bit onerous, uh, not only on our company, but new companies coming into the state. Uh, we use a rapidly renewable resource here in the state of Maine. It's managed by my office and my staff. Um, we have, basically we have operations in nine communities in Maine. Uh, we've been in business here for 164 years. We have, as I mentioned, 800 employees, 400 of which are in York County. Uh, there have been no wells dried up, no streams harmed, and no habitat fouled. We run our business so that it'll be here for another 100 years from now. To build the Kingfield plant, you heard today a little bit, it took four years of a public process, public hearings through the water district, the town, DEP, NRPA process. They can't bring that up enough about the existing regulations that are in place, the existing loops, and the existing hoops that we have to jump through to get one of these processes going. It took four years to get Kingfield up and running this month uh, in, in Franklin County. Um, it's basically, I think, coming down to a chicken or egg problem on this referendum issue. Um, you have uh, basically an egg, if you will, is, uh, could be defined as water um, or the basic needs that a company uh, needs to do business. You can't have a business without water. I don't care what business you're in. Um, what I see in certain parts of Maine lately is a culture of no. It's a, it's a basically, um, I, I don't think that at the referendum level or the water district level, that process uh, is, uh, I don't think that the process at that level is designed to analyze all the issues that we have uh, revolving around water. And that's why we have the regulations in the state that we have. Um, I believe, uh, as Mr. Labby mentioned, uh, any potential project in Kenny Bunker Wells would have went on to planning board approval, uh, NRPA approval, and uh, the contract itself would have been uh, subject to PUC approval. But um, a little bit back to the chicken or egg problem. If you basically need a referendum, you need to pass a referendum in order to get a basic agreement to supply water to your company, then basically we are going to be dealing with all these rhetorical issues um, before our company can collect the facts needed to basically answer those questions. It takes a lot of investment to get down to step two, uh, investigate the water resource, check the recharge, check the depth of the aquifers, do the in-stream flow requirements and the measurement of that uh, water flow. And so it takes a lot of investment to do that. Uh, a contract with a water district or an agreement is an initial step down that road, um, which gives you the ability to invest more and uh, basically get more information about the process. So you can never hatch that chicken without going through the process of uh, collecting more information. And I'm afraid we're just going to break the egg a little bit too early um, if we're trying to rush and, and basically cover a lot of these issues about multinational corporations, uh, companies from outside, uh, price of water, traffic issues so early in the stage of projects lately. And um, I think uh, this project, especially in Southern York County, is really important to our company. We uh, have uh, the Hollis plant really close to this uh, uh, watershed uh, in Branch Brook. It's getting very rare to find watersheds that are uh, as protected as this watershed. There's too many people basically in Southern York County and Southern Maine in general. So we've got to pursue these types of partnerships in order to keep our business growing in the future. So um, with that, I will... Uh, take any questions you have um, of me.
Thank you, Mr. Dubois. The, the first one, how difficult it is to get water into Canada? You said some of this was shipped to Canada. A very small amount is shipped from, Poland, from our Poland mm. Spring plant because we do flavored sparkling water. That's a very, very small part of our business. Um, so, I mean, uh, in, terms of, in terms of governmental action, they, you show up and here's the water and they say, <laughs> we've got to test it for four different things before allow it into Canada? No, there's actually a pretty strict regulation process in the um, province of Quebec, for instance. They have a uh, process that even goes beyond some of our in-stream flow rules processes to uh, determine whether there's surface water input to a source. So in some different provinces, there are uh, pretty strict regulations. But One of the flyers that was passed around in Kenneba related to this, and, and I'll just read it to you, uh, the for-profit water bottling industry takes our water and sells it back to us at 2,000 times what it would cost us from the taps. That in itself, I commend your company for getting us to do that. <laughs> and I, and I, I guess I'm in awe. I am too. 